this is a lead screw off the milling machine it's 10 threads of the inch acne thread left hand thread I've got to make a couple of bronze nuts out of that bit of bronze to fit it I'll just check that it is 10 threads to the inch that's a 10 thread to the inch gauge it's not an acme gauge it's just an ordinary Whitworth foam thread normally on a lot of machine tools you get a common thread as 8 threads to the inch which gives you 125 thou a turn obviously 10 threads to the inch is 100 thou per full turn this chart shows a necessary conversion gears to convert the metric lathe to screw cut imperial threads that's a thread I need to cut 10 teeth to the inch and these are the gears I need to set up in the back of the lathe the change wheels to allow us to cut the the 10 threads to the inch. I have got the gears, I borrowed the particular gear I need which was a 63 tooth gear. We'll have a look in the back of the lathe, put the gears on. This is the gear case on the back of the Harrison lathe where the change wheels live. At the minute it's set up the cut metric, I've never had to change any of these yet. I did it quite regular on my box fad lathe for cutting imperial threads, sorry for cutting metric threads because that was an imperial lathe we're going to go over the other way around today and we're going to try and cut an imperial thread on a metric lathe. The top gear, that's what they call a stud gear. That's an idler gear. The bottom one there is your screw gear. I knew these big spanners would come in handy one day. That's very tight on there. Very tight. It shouldn't be as tight as that. Not was actually on backwards. Shouldn't make any difference, but it was on backwards. You can tell the layers had very little use because the nuts there's no around the off marks on the flats of the nuts are still nice and nice and square. The gear should just pull off. There's keys a key in them. What's the keys doing? Fall out. All these were quite badly worn on my box fat layer that's been changed that many times. That's a little bit of swarf on there. This thing here, it's called a banjo. It's actually shaped like a banjo, and what that allows it to do is to move that 
up and down to move the gear into mesh and I assume you loosen that one there and it allows that to slide up and down that slot. Which it does, that's great. Right, we'll get the gears, put the gears on, and so we can get it set up. Top gear, the screw gear, I need a 50 on there. Tight fit this. Right, fifty under there. On here, only what transition gears. That one's a 63, which is that one. This is a special one, this one is very hard to get. 63, that one drives that one, and on there we'll have Right, so we've got a 50, driving a 63, and a 40, driving a 120. This looks more like it. Right, I need to put a spacer in behind there. Quite tight on the threads, that nut. Get things into mesh a little bit, then I'll make it easier to tighten the tighten the things up. And that's sort of how it works. You set these gears up with a little bit of clearance on them. I'll show you once I get the nuts tightened what I mean by clearance. I 
there's a spindle extension here what it does it stops any shite that comes up the main shaft the lathe going at the gear train but what's happening is it's catching on that top gear so I'll have to take it off for the minute Took the big cover off so I can have a look and see what, how it was fastened on. It's just screwed on. What I'll do, I'll put a, I'll put something there to blank the hole off just to stop any shade coming through when I'm screw cutting the thread. See the gears working there. They're all rattling and clattering about, but it doesn't make any difference. See any clearance on them. seen grease for a long time. There's a safety interlock switch down there which stops you from starting the lathe when the end cover is missing. I'll override it just to show you the show you the gears running. That's it there. We'll press that. Start one there. That's a gear train running there. Move it up here. As soon as I let go of the switch, obviously the, the machine stops. Obviously that was done just to show you that the gears run under power. Not a good idea to play with safety and lock switches. Right, just to recap, we've got a 50 tooth stud gear. We're having a 63, which is attached to a 40. That's our conversion gear, which is driving a 120 stud gear. Right, this is the gearbox on the front of the lathe. We're looking for 10 thirds of the inch. For 10 thirds of the inch, it's telling me that lever goes that way, that lever goes that way. The right hand lever goes that way. And this goes on the third one down. Fourth one down. Right, so it's left, left, right, one, two, three, fourth one down. In theory that should cut 10 TPI. Right, I've got the nail set up, run nice and slow. I've got the nail screw engage. If we engage a half nuts. My carriage is coming out of that, that means it's going to be cutting the left hand thread. I put a bit of ball in the chuck, we'll cut a thread on it just to verify it is 10 TPI. What I can't do now, I can't disengage the leaf screw. I must give it engage all the time while the thread's being cut. 
and that is spot on TPA, TPA that is spot on 10 threads of the inch and it's cut the left hand thread so to take another cut I'll have to reverse the lathe we'll do, do it just for the fun of it Right, started up going forwards, cross right back into zero. So it is possible to cut his left hand thread, ten threads of the inch. Of course it's going to be internal, which is worse again. One thing at least the, the layer's got a clutch on, I can use that. 